Happy springtime from Sefton Motors. We're here for another Sefton Motors update. We've got some exciting stuff to talk about and to share with you. i have always like to start first with a little bit of face-to-face. -face. We're going to spend most of the update in the shop going over what's changed, what's updated. But uh, let's just go ahead and get started with our, with our update. Always remember, get hot and run. All right, what are updates that I'm going to go into today is basically two things. First is we're going to go into defining and understanding our term universal generator, what that means, right? I think that's becoming very descriptive of our Melvin heat engine and the capability it has on so many different levels. And we want to make sure that we, we hit home on that for new people who are listening, but also to people who have been following us for years and want some clarity as to well, what does the Melvin really do? All right, so first, the universal generator. We're going to talk, one, the universality of the fuel used for it, and two, the universality of the functions that it can perform, right? Then we're going to take a deep dive into our kinematics. We've had some updates to the kinematics. We've uh, done some testing with a stacked four bar, and then also we've got our current latest incarnation, which is a, a, a rocker design. We're going to deep dive, tape a, take a take a bit of a deep dive into that and share that with you. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and get right to it. Okay, let's start with a quick walk around the Melvin engine. We're at the hot end right here. This is the firebox with the propane interface. We're coming back. We've got a quick uh, temperature gauge there. It tells you what the temperature of the firebox is. And you'll see the firebox is mounted to the chamber through that flat flange. Here are a couple new features, water inlet and outlet valves um, and a water level indicator totally automates the water jacket cooling function and then we're looking at the kinematics in here and this is the rocker style kinematics that we're going to get into in more detail and show you a little bit later as we come around we're going to see the electronics where we have coming out the uh, bridge rectifier from the hub motor going into a charge controller going into a battery bank and then the inverter and that gives a quick summary. Now let's get into the four features that we're talking about. First up is electricity. Okay, let's go into the function of generating electricity for the Melvin. The way we generate electricity, we spin this uh, hub motor, one or two of them. And this is a commodity item. This is from China. And we spin that and it generates a, a AC uh, power. We take that AC power and we feed it through that bridge rectifier you're seeing on the right. Then that goes into the charge controller. Then the charge controller goes to the battery bank underneath the engine. And then into the inverter. And you can see here the engine is running under load. It is charging those batteries up. Uh, and we're going to just show here a little demonstration of a couple of hand tools running off that inverter. First the drill. Uh, then we have a uh, Dremel tool. And then we turn them both on. Pretty, pretty straightforward type of stuff. The, the configuration we have though is the one that we prefer and that is to have the batteries facing the variable uh, power usage. So, so the battery is really what is powering the, the inverter, right? So any spikes you might have or whatever, that's all absorbed by that, uh, by that you know, battery bank. And then the engine is just steady state power refilling those batteries. Now, here I just took a quick snapshot of generators on the, on the market today. Up the top are the popular portable ones, and then down the bottom are like uh, Generac type home type uh, of uh, generators. And you can see that they, they both have their purpose, both are great uh, products, but almost all of them are limited by their fuel source and by the functionality they produce. And we're going to talk more about that. But let's go ahead and now get into the next topic or the next function of the Melvin engine, and that is as a heat source. Okay, let's look at the heating function of the Melvin. This is our standard firebox. You could see um, simple. Uh, we have on the three interface here, we're gonna be looking at the wood in interface, wood input, and then this is gonna be the waste oil cartridge that uh, Chase is gonna slide on the same interface. Um, and we're going to show you just how they operate. But what a great uh, wood stove or heater or propane heater or waste oil heater. This is the waste oil burner that you see here outside of it. 
that's naturally aspirated. There's no fan or anything like that. It's just great heat. And look at the amount of heat it puts out, tremendous amount of heat. In addition, we have the wood uh, interface that allows you to burn wood to heat up the engine and get your electricity. And lastly, of course, the one we work with a lot at the shop is the propane burner. Now, if you look at that firebox there, that one is insulated. So if you don't want it heating the area, you don't have to. But it, it does work as a great uh, uh, space heater and using any type of uh, heat source you want, the wood, the propane, the waste oil, whatever it might be. Now, here are a couple of uh, uh, traditional heating elements for houses or shelters, whatever you want to make of it. These are wood stoves and then also boilers, right? Now, of course, these are standalone units, but you get to think about it. Why are they standalone? Why not combine these functions? And the Melvin does that. Now, let's look at the hot water function. All right, as you know, the Melvin also produces hot water. We take the heat that is on the hot side of the engine and we move that to the cold side to cool it. And we use water to do that. We've added two new um, valves for water intake, which is what you're looking right here. This is a float valve for coming into the top. And then on the bottom, we have a uh, temperature valve for uh, releasing that water once it reaches a certain temperature, about 80 degrees. Or you, you can actually dial in the temperature you want it to come out as. So now you get the hot water out of that tank, which is about a 12-gallon tank. And here you can see a couple of um, water tank heaters that are on the market. So at this point now, I've bought the, I've bought the heater, I've bought the wood stove, and I've bought the generator. Well, why are we buying these three individual units? The Melvin does it all. The Melvin, that is what makes it a universal generator. Now let's dive into the kinematics. Okay, let's talk kinematics. Kinematics are a key important part of Stirling engines because there's, it's, a, it's a small power cycle. So you don't want to lose any with friction or parts bending, things of that nature. Where we left off last time was the split uh, crank where we have half the crank is running the piston and the other half is running the displacer and they're joined by a, a piece of metal in, in the middle. Well, as we started to get up in speed and in power, we started to notice some things that just did not seem like they were gonna scale with power or speed. So we started looking at alternatives. Here you can see the split crank in operation here and it, and it does work well at the, you know, under kilowatt uh, type of scenario. But as you start to load that thing up, you'll see that horseshoe linkage, the piston connecting rod, is not centered, right? It's a slight, slight bit off center. It's actually putting a lot of load on the bearings that it's attached to. So let's take a look, let's take a look at a couple of the uh, kinematics designs that we investigated here and what we ended up with. And we're gonna show you a, a, a running example of each. First, Let's look at this one here, uh, what I call a stacked four bar, two four bars joined by a single uh, crank, right? And you can see it is a relatively elegant uh, linkage, but we had problems with getting it to work right. We had the phasing on half of the stroke or half of the cycle was uh, working well, but on the other half of the cycle, the, the, the phasing changed and we, we just had a very hard time dialing it in and changing the link dimensions by a small amount created a tremendous amount of difference in the, in the cycle. So, so we went with this uh, rocker arm, which is a pretty traditional linkage for Sterling engines. And this is what it looks like. You have a rocker that uh, drives a displacer and then the piston is directly connected to the crank. And we're getting very good results with it. We like it. It has a very even load on the, on the crank. And we think it's gonna, gonna do quite well for us. And it's, it has so far in our trials and tests. We wanna give a little plug out to this tool that we used a lot for our linkage design. It's PK, PMKS or PKMS. It's a free tool, it's online. It allows you just to uh, quickly lay out your kinematic linkage and then show you how the different uh, links operate and are related to one another. Great tool, 
free to use. It just is a wonderful thing. And then what we do is after we uh, get an idea of our concept, then we'll go ahead and take that into Fusion 360 and develop the actual links and whatnot. But what a great tool for just understanding what's going on with the linkages, maintaining linear, uh, linear paths on the linkage and, and all kinds of things. So we, we highly recommend that. All right, now we're just gonna take a real quick snapshot of these two link designs and show you how, they're, how they were functioning in our test. This is the first, this is the stack four bar. See, the engine is running, but what you can't really pick up here, and it is developing some voltage out there, right? But what you can't really uh, pick up is the, the, the cycle just was not very strong. It just was not very uh, good. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second one, the rocker arm. And this one, we're really happy with the cycle. It has a real nice snap to it. We're getting good, good speeds. And um, we think it's really going to be able to scale to higher powers with higher pressures and things of that nature. So um, this is probably what um, you'll see on uh, your Melvin engine when you uh, order it uh, today. Okay. All right, guys, that's pretty much a wrap for our update. We are redesigning our uh, pump piston for the new kinematics that we'll have out shortly. We have some new uh, helpers at Sefton Motors. As you know, we're getting more and more into the artificial intelligence realm. And here we have a couple of our virtual assistants. These are little teasers, more to come on these guys later. Plus, we have a couple of new upcoming features that we will be showing you uh, in the not too distant future. But uh, well, thanks so much for all your support. And please, if you're in Michigan, come and visit us. We love to have visitors. And we wish you uh, all the best in this new year. Uh, we'll see you around the, around the campus, as they say. 